Hi guys, Stefan once more from Stefanzine responding spontaneously in many respects to the news, the unfolding story, of course, involving Frank de Boer and his sacking from Crystal Palace. So he leaves the club, having not won a game in four matches with his side, not even scoring a single goal. So that's huge news just come out of the club in the last couple of hours now. But um, still, the story is very much unfolding with news that Hodgson could be in line to replace the Dutchman. So there you have it. Now my views on this, I mean there's a lot of ways you can pick this whole situation apart. It's really disappointing for Palace first of all, and I think it was a very bold, bold move in the first place to appoint De Boer. A very positive move, and my sort of thinking, particularly in hindsight now he's gone, behind that was that Steve Parrish, being such a shrewd businessman as he possibly is, uh, wanted to really build the club or rebuild the, reinvent the club in terms of their global identity and bring an attractive brand of football to Croydon uh, with the side playing a more passing total football type of game and effectively selling that to the world. Not overnight for sure, but certainly across this season and the forthcoming seasons, I'm sure that was sort of the plan behind De Boer's appointment. But so obviously that's come a cropper with the result at Burnley really the final nail in many respects in the coffin sending De Boer packing and ironically as well you just signed Mamadou Sako and then you have Lee Chang Young present the ball to Chris Wood who duly obliged and scored for Burnley and yeah I mean it's just all gone wrong but for me as well a big moment in this season so far for Palace was that Benteke miss at Anfield uh, I thought that was pivotal particularly now of course with De Boer having left the club I keep looking back on that and thinking that's, that was the moment. Uh, it was such a presentable opportunity. So, certainly that's not the only moment. Even looking at Scott Dan, yesterday he could have scored very, very late on for Palace and probably should have, really. So, again, another centre-half, um, by the way, involved. They also look at the absentees. Now, obviously, Wilfred Zaha hasn't been playing. And um, I think that's been huge. Also, strangely as well, players like Kibai have sort of been on the sidelines and not, certainly not really played a pivotal role. So there's so many different nuances to this unfolding story. It's really quite fascinating. I'd actually love to write a piece on this. I'm not sure I'll have time. But um, anyway, this video will surely suffice in well, with me relating my thoughts on the matter, at least for now. And we'll wait to see if indeed Roy Hodgson does take the reins. Probably by the time this video comes out, he'll already be confirmed. I think he's certainly, certainly, certainly odds on favourite now to take over as Crystal Palace boss. And again, that's hugely controversial in itself. And I won't even need to get into that. I'm sure you know why. After his time with England at last summer's Euro 2016 finals. So there you go. I've been Stefan, Stefan from Stefanzine. Uh, please tweet me with your thoughts on this matter. Did De Boer deserve to go? And should Hodgson replace De Boer indeed, as it looks like that will be the case? How a Crystal Palace going to finish this season? Will they stay up?